Hello and welcome back. So what you saw there was a thread pitch of 1.5 millimeters, a metric thread. And this has been done on my new Hafco lathe that I got a month or so ago. Now currently I'm in the middle of making the second part of the threading jig for the wood lathe and I need to cut some imperial threads. Therefore, I need to alter the change gears on the lathe here so that I can cut the imperial threads. Now, the instructions I got with the lathe don't give much information on changing the screw cutting gears. It certainly tells you what gears need to be where with the type of threads you're cutting, whether it's imperial or metric. But there's no information on what needs to be loosened off and how to set it all back up again so it's running correctly. So of course, you know, you head off to Google and do some Google searches. And there are quite a few videos on swapping out these change gears. But of course, there's really nothing that I could see for this particular lathe. I did reach out to a person called Ted in Australia, who shows a video of a similar lathe. We actually had some issues with changing the gears. And he went on and brought a lathe pretty much just like the one I've got but there were no videos on changing the gears in this one. But I think it's pretty similar. So I thought to help people out in the future that have a lathe like this, I'll record this process and then at least there's something they can refer to. The thread that you just saw being cut there is a 1.5 millimeter metric thread. And I've dialed that up on these dials here. So AC to S. And if we go to the metric threading panel here, we've got AC, 2S, gives us 1.5. I don't know how good this comes up on the video. So once I've changed the gears, I'm going to leave these dials the same. And I'm going to go AC, 2S, and I should get a 12 TPI thread with these same settings once these gears have been changed. And if that's the case, then I know that everything has worked out correctly. So I've opened up the end panel here, and this looks a lot less complex than some of the older lathes that have a whole bunch of gears that need to be changed. They call this one the A gear, this one's the B gear, and then there's a double gear in the middle, so it's a 127 tooth and 120 on the back side. And if we bring up the diagram out of the manual, uh, this stuff down the bottom, that's if you have a imperial lead screw. But I do not have an imperial lead screw, I've got a metric lead screw. So um, the machine is set up on this side at the moment, 30 teeth at the top on the A gear. 40 teeth on the B gear, and we need to change it so that we have 40 teeth on the A gear over here. But the B gear is actually running on the 120 teeth in the metric, and we need the B gear to run on the 127 teeth for Imperial here. So basically this gear down the bottom here needs to come out and ride on the teeth here. I've turned off the main switch before I've started here. Also, at the back here, there is a uh, interlock with the front panel. So when it's closed, it piece goes in here and it uh, allows the machine to run. So now we have those safety precautions out of the way. Let's get started. What I've seen in other videos is there's two areas that need to be lined back up again. So because we're... I'm moving this gear or turning it round to run on here and we're putting a bigger gear in here it's obviously not going to fit so this pulley needs to come out a bit for the bigger gear that goes in the back and if I loosen off this nut here then this whole gear here will actually move and also this nut and there's a Allen hex head under here and if you loosen that off, then this will actually slide down as well. So it's a matter of getting the gears or the correct gears on here and then lining one up and then uh, lining up the other one. Perhaps it's better if I just do it and then 
it'll become much clearer. The first step is to loosen off the nuts for the A gear at the top and the B gear at the bottom. That's an 18mm socket. Then I loosen off that big gear in the centre, that's a 16mm socket. And also the nut on the banjo there. The banjo can be slid down now. There is a hex head screw under here that needs to be loosened. And to be honest it was already a little bit loose and that's why the banjo was able to move down there. So I've moved it down out of the way and if you loosen that centre bolt off that's how that big gear slides horizontally. Now I remove the nut for the B gear and I line up the keyway to the top and then just pull it out. Now this has got 40 written on the back and basically all I need to do is use the same gear, turn it round and put it on the other way because it has a step and it's going to push that gear out to our outer ring on that big centre gear. I make sure that it meshes in the right place and that looks good. Next I remove the nut from the top gear and again here I just want to get it with the keyway at the top and I remove it. That's the 30 gear. I'm replacing it with a 40 tooth gear and it's the same orientation so this gear is going to run on the back side of that large centre gear. Once both gears are in we need to align all the gears again and we start with the bottom here and we use the big gear and just slide it horizontally and you can see it's just sliding on a bar there. Now I have no idea what the clearance should be but on a YouTube video I saw someone use a piece of paper about four thou and they just push that into the gear and then tighten the gear down. Now that centre gear is locked on to that banjo and it's engaged with that B gear at the bottom there. Just give that a quick nip up. The next step is to engage that large gear with the A gear at the top and the banjo just swings up. Now there was a bit of a wire at the back there that it was catching on so I had to sort of navigate around that. Again I'm going to use a sheet of paper here just to put into the teeth to give it some clearance. And it's a bit hard to see but I tighten up that banjo nut at the bottom. I remove the paper and check that we have enough clearance there and the teeth aren't binding. Now I need to lock that banjo up. And as I said, this hex head screw was loose to begin with, so it took a bit to get this all wound down. It's in a very awkward place. Once that's done, I come back and tighten down all four of these nuts. I give it a few rotations just to make sure that nothing's binding up, and that all works good. Wipe off all the dirty fingerprints. And close up the cabinet. I've turned around that piece of steel and I'm threading on the other side now. Straight away you can see the threads do look wider apart which is a good sign. Then I bring in the gauge and we've got bang on 12 threads per inch, which is fantastic. Well, that was a lot easier than what I thought it would be. I've seen others on YouTube changing screw cutting gears on older lathes and it looks like it's a bit of a mission with a whole bunch of gears that need to be changed. Now this lathe is a Hefco AL356 and I believe the Hefco brand is only sold in Australia and New Zealand. But I have my suspicions about these Chinese lathes and I think they're mass produced and sold under a whole bunch of different brands. So what I've seen on the internet, some other brands of lathes that are similar to this one are Bailey, Precision Matthews, Made in China. So maybe if you have one of those lathes, it may have the same types of change gears 
So this video might be useful if you have one of those types of laves. I hope the information in this video helps someone out in the future. And as always, thanks for watching.